she was about to call out to Udwak, she saw another woman behind Udwak in the kitchen. The young woman looked so much exactly like Udwak and she blew some strange powder on Udwak before Udwak could turn around and immediately Udwak fell to the ground and lost consciousness. The Udwak lookalike carried Udwak to the storehouse. <laughs> Welcome to Iagba's Epic Tales. Once upon a time, they lived a woman named Ituru. Ituru was married for five years and had no child until the sixth year of her marriage when she eventually conceived. She and her husband was grateful and happy for they had visited many medicine houses and tried numerous herbal remedies and concussions. Few months later, when Ituru was due, she delivered twin baby girls. Alas, this is not good, the couple exclaimed. At that time in their village, Twins were considered evil and a taboo, and as such, were thrown into the evil forest. Itura had been without child for five years, and now, not only had God blessed her with a child, but with two at once. Itura and her husband do not consider their twin babies as evil. As a matter of fact, they and some very few other people in their village considers the custom of their village as regards the discarding of twin babies as barbaric. This is because all the surrounding villages are experiencing civilization and adjusting accordingly. But their own village had refused to embrace these changes. Itori and her husband on few occasions in the past had visited the city and other fast-growing villages and towns. And that is how they know these things. They thought of how they could convince the elders of the village that their babies are not evil. But no idea came to their mind. They could not afford to lose these God's gifts to them after a long time. So, they hid the birth of their babies from everyone. And all through the night, they stayed awake, thinking of a possible solution. Finally, they found one. The midwife who had helped Itoro to deliver a baby was not only a midwife, she was also Itoro's friend. Her name was Eno. Eno and Itoro have been friends since their teenage years and grew up together. But three years ago, Eno got married to an Igbo merchant and then moved to the city where she and her husband lives. Because she is a midwife, she had come to stay with her friend at her request two weeks earlier. And that is why they had been able to keep the secret about Itoro's twin babies all through the night. Heno had also been married for three years without any child to call her own yet. Itoro and her husband decided to give Eno one of the twin babies to take with her to the city and look after her. They decided on this because they all agreed that it was better than losing both twin babies or seeing both twin babies die if the elders of the village got to find out. And so, early the next morning before the day got bright, Eno left with one of the twin babies. Itora and her husband named the baby with them, Udwak. Udwa grew up into a beautiful young woman and got married to a young man named Anyekan. Udwa and Anyekan's marriage had been pleasant until recently when he began to notice some changes in his wife. Before now, whenever Anyekan returned from work, he was certain that his dinner was ready and that his wife Udwa had never for once in their one year of marriage, slack concerning that. But one evening, he returned home tired and exhausted, 
but met no food in the house. Where is my food? He asked politely. But Uduak ignored him. He asked again the second time. And Uduak gave him a disdainful look and walked out of him. This was strange to Anyekan as Uduak had never acted in such a way to him before. She must have had a bad day. But who could have made her angry? Or is it her who must have done something wrong to offend her? He asked himself. He went into their bedroom to speak with her and to inquire from her what the problem was. But she wasn't there. That was when he realized that she had gone out through the back door in the kitchen. Where had she gone to now with such mood? He said. Anyekan went out to look for his wife as he feared that all was not well. After hours of searching and not being able to find her, he decided to return home and hoped that she would be home too. When he got home, he saw Uduak deeply asleep. Well, he decided to let her be that night so as to not to annoy her the more. The next morning when Anyekan woke up, Uduak was already in the kitchen preparing breakfast. Good morning, my husband. I am sorry I slept off last night and could not make dinner for you before you returned. I don't know why I felt so tired and slept so deep yesterday, Uduak said to Anyekan immediately he entered the kitchen. Anyekan was surprised. This is the same person who gave him a sour attitude and did not speak to him when he had returned yesterday. He asked his wife if something had happened yesterday and she said no. Then, he asked if someone had offended her or if it was him who had done something wrong which she does not know of and she replied no again. Anyekan told his wife of her unconventional sour behavior towards him the night before and she denied ever doing something like that. Well, they concluded that Udwak may have been sleepwalking and that was why all that may have happened. When Udwak was an adolescent, she used to sleepwalk, but that condition had stopped a long time ago, even before she got married. But after hearing all that her husband told her about the previous evening, it caused her to worry that the sleepwalking condition may have returned. After that day, Anyeka noticed more unconventional behavior about his wife. Today, she would be sweet like the Udwak he fell in love with and had been married to for a year now. But the next day, she would become someone else, acting very rude and giving sour attitudes. Anekan became tired. He got angry because for every time he spoke to his wife when she was calm and had returned back to her old self, she would deny ever doing those things or remembering them. This is beyond sleepwalking. You are only just being mischievous, he told his wife. Udwak's switch in attitude continued and for every time she displayed the negative one, it was worse than the previous one. She would either not prepare his meal and if she did, she would put cockroaches in the food or sometimes large stones, preventing him from even eating the food. She would also not wash his clothes or would soil the ones she had washed the previous day in the mud. Anikan got really tired and lost his patience and their once sweet and peaceful home became a home of constant quarrels and fights. He reported that to her parents. Her parents also thought that all Udwak must have done was as a result of the sleepwalking condition which may have returned. Udwak her parents and Anyekan all decided to seek the help of a medicine man to ascertain what was wrong with her and for a solution. After checking her, the medicine man said there was nothing wrong with her. However, he informed them that Udwak was with child. This news brought smiles to everyone's face. Maybe it's the pregnancy or months, everyone concluded. Anyekan decided to be more patient with his wife because of the pregnancy. But one evening, he returned home and saw Udwak drinking palm wine and smoking Igbo, which is also known as Indian hemp. 
and Yekan was enraged at what he saw. He quickly took away the Indian M from Udwak's hand. What are you doing? Do you want to harm our baby? He said. Udwak, who was now angry that her husband had collected the Indian M from her, struggled with him to collect back her Indian M. And while they struggled, she passed out. And Yekan quickly rushed to the herbal doctor who revived her back to consciousness but declared that Udwak was no longer pregnant. And Yekan was so mad. So, you have killed our baby, he said. He so much wanted to beat her, but he was not a woman beater, so he went over to his in-law's house to report his wife. His in-laws followed him to the house. When they arrived, they met Udwak on the bed, deeply asleep. And Yekan told his in-laws that he had had enough and was no longer interested in the marriage. He sent Udwak home with her parents despite her cries and pleas. Udwak returned to her parents' house, but her parents did not see all that Anekan had accused her of. Their daughter was still the same sweet and calm young woman they had brought up. Well, Udwak continued having morning sickness and throws up at the smell of food. These were signs of pregnancy, so her parents took her to a herbal doctor who confirmed that Udwak was pregnant. This was strange. The other herbal doctor had said Udwak had lost the baby and was no longer pregnant. Well, they tried another herbal doctor and then a midwife and both confirmed that Udwak was with child. Her parents called for her husband and the herbal doctor who had said she was no longer pregnant. The herbal doctor checked Udwak again and discovered that her parents and the other doctors were right. Udwak was still pregnant. This was also strange to him. Why would he lie to them about Udwak not being pregnant again? He asked them. Was he not the one who had confirmed her pregnancy the first time? While they all sat deliberating the issue, a woman knocked on the door. The woman was Udwak and Anyekan's neighbor. She had witnessed something some days earlier and that was why she had come. The woman told everyone that some days earlier she had gone to beg Udwak for some firewood that evening to cook the evening meal as her child had mistakenly poured water on the one she had and she couldn't go to the bush that evening to get another one because it was lit. She said that while she was about to call out to Udwak, she saw another woman behind Udwak in the kitchen. The young woman looked so much exactly like Udwak and she blew some strange powder on Udwak before Udwak could turn around and immediately Udwak fell to the ground and lost consciousness. The Udwak lookalike carried Udwak to the storehouse and locked her in there. The woman, seeing what was happening, confronted the Udwak's lookalike as she was carrying Udwak to the storeroom. She was about to scream and call out for help, but the lady hit her with a big log of food and she passed out. Somehow, her husband told her that she, he found her at the back of their house and rescued her. She had tried to inform Anyekan, Udwak's husband, when she regained consciousness days later. But Anyekan was barely at home, and so was Udwak, whom she later learned was sent back to her parents' house. And that was why she had come to tell them what she had witnessed. Udwak's look alike? Who must that person be? Everyone asked. However, Udwak's parents stare at each other fear of the words written all over their faces. They decided to set a trap. Udwak and her husband returned home. And true to the neighbor's words, that evening when Udwak went into her kitchen, the lookalike came and blew the strange powder on her. Udwak fell unconscious again. Then the a lookalike quickly carried Udwak and locked her in the, in the storehouse why she went in to change into Udwak's clothes. She came out of the sitting room and brought out a palm wine to drink. That was when everybody came out of their hiding place. 
everyone stare in shock. Anekan was more than founded. So, it had been someone else impersonating his wife all this time. After questioning the young woman, she revealed that her name was Ijoma and that she is Udwak's twin sister whom her biological parents had given away to her friend when they were young. Ijoma went further to reveal that Heno, whom she had thought was her biological mother, revealed to her on her dying bed that she and her husband were not her biological parents and told her all about her biological parents and their village. Eno's husband had refused to accept Ijoma as his own even though Eno had given her an Igbo name. Eno's husband married a second wife since Eno could not give him his own biological child. And after Eno's death, her husband and the second wife maltreated Ijoma so badly. Ijoma could not leave her. She was very young then. But when she came of age, she decided to return to her village of birth. But she realized that her biological parents and twin sister were living their lives happily and never bothered to check on her or look for her all these years, even when the practice of killing twin babies had been stopped in their village. And for that, she hated them and vowed to make them suffer. She said Udwak was an easy target because of the resemblance and that was why she had dealt with Udwak. The powder which she blew on Udwak was a strong medicine that caused one to fall into a deep sleep for many hours and forget about the last thing they did or see before the sleep. This she said she did to cause problems for Udwak and ensure that she would not be happy in her marriage. Udwak's parents were shocked. They asked that Ijoma forgive them. They had not intentionally abandoned her, for they had gone to check on her a year after their birth, but was told that Eno and her husband had moved to another town. They kept checking year after year, hoping to find Eno and their second twin daughter, but they did not. Ijoma, on hearing this, felt sorry and regretted her action. She had thought that her, her biological parents had abandoned her. If only, she had just shown herself to them when she got to the village and not eat herself, instead of getting clothes when she arrived the village. She had judged them from afar and hated them for no reason. She would have found that how much her real parents loved her also and had looked for her all these years. She apologized to her parents and twin sister for all the problems she caused them. Ijoma was forgiven and welcomed back into the family. The end. The moral lesson of this story is that we should always not assume things. It is not a good idea to guess or think you know everything about a situation or a person without getting all the facts. In the story, Udwak's twin sister Ijoma assumed that her family didn't care about her without really knowing the whole truth. I hope you enjoyed the story and have learned a thing or two from it. I would love to know. Please leave a comment. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video. Bye.